I think it's important to often check back on some of the controversies that have happened over the years, especially inside of our educational system like we had with Mizzou and with places like Evergreen State College because it gives me hope. It gives me faith that our system actually works and that we have choice in the schools that we go to and people are making the correct decision, in my opinion, on where to spend their tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases, on their education. People are making the correct decision and choosing to not spend their money at a school that literally had a no whites allowed day. Black power! Black power! Black power! Yes, it was the day of absence where whites were not allowed on campus. This is a state-funded school, by the way, Evergreen State College in Washington, the center of the Brett Weinstein controversy. Students literally taking over the, uh, the faculty buildings, making demands, was an absolute hilarious shit show. And it is always excellent. As with the uh, BLM school last year, or a few years ago, closing dorms, we see the exact same thing happening with Evergreen State College, rightfully so, in my opinion. Now, the tuition at Evergreen State College is about $7,000 a year for in-state residents and $25,000 a year for out-of-state residents. That's how it works in the United States. If you go to a school that's in your state because they're getting, I'm assuming, subsidies from the actual state, you, the student, pay much less. If you choose to travel out-of-state to a college, then you pay the price because you're not they're not getting the money from your government. Now, there are states that have agreements. For example, in Wisconsin, I can go to a college in Minnesota and pay in-state tuition. They can come to mine. Good deals, I think. Nonetheless, we are seeing news that forecasts now show tuition in 2018 or enrollment is going to drop by 20%. They've had to eliminate 24 full-time faculty positions. They have had to close openings on 19 open positions. And they are projecting another 20 full-time faculty staff terminations yet this year. This is on the heels of news coming out a little bit earlier this year that they've had to cancel their brand new dormitory uh, housing project. The $42 million student housing project has had to be put on hold. It's been delayed for at least one year, but let's be real. It is never going to happen. This school will never likely recover, at least in the immediate future. They say they will revisit again in early 2019. But to be honest, they were going to build a 400 bed, $42 million dormitory. And the school's enrollment is at 3,637 and expected to drop, as we said, 20. I've seen websites that have projected as high as 30% drop in enrollment this year. 45% of Evergreen's undergraduate students transfer to the school from community college. I went to school just like this. Um, and it's funny, they've already been dipping into their emergency reserves, although the board of trustees didn't take action in the first year housing project, they did approve a motion for the president or his designee to spend as much as 1.3 million from the emergency reserve to fund, to pay expenses associated with the events of spring 2017. Now the events of spring 17, of course, is the Brett Weinstein hilarity uh, where, and the day of absence, which as of February, I found at least one report. I've seen conflicting reports. I saw a report of them extending the day of absence to three days. Uh, this in February reports that they have canceled 
the day of absence. Imagine my shock. Uh, they canceled what is essentially a racist holiday uh, in a state-funded institution. We see here a 20% drop. The budget deficit that I've seen attached to this is something like $6 million. Why do we talk about this sort of thing? Why do we talk about hilarity at Evergreen State College? Because it gives us faith. It gives us a reason to live. It gives us reason to continue to fight. And now a bulletin board flyer has been leaked to the interwebs. And it was shared with me by a fellow YouTuber, Benjamin Boyce. I'm going to link his channel in the description below. He does a great job covering a lot of the evergreen uh, hilarity and campus craziness. But let's look at the letter from concerned students to the evergreen community. Now, it is not, in their opinion, the day of absence that led to their insane enrollment drop. It is, as you will find out, the high price of food on campus. The administration has made very little attempt to communicate with students the intentions of the cuts. They masked the layoffs of 30% of the faculty. Now that is a higher number than I've seen reported. This is presumably written by a student or some staffer, so maybe they have better information. And cutting the costume shop and scene shop with the imagery of Evergreen's new marketing department, which has compromised the student community to make their tour more appealing. Now, what's happening? Well, when you go to college, you often will tour the campus. And what they're saying here is the tour guides are sp taking a specific route to cut certain things out of the student tour to get to try and lie to new incoming students. Now they're saying, well, it's costing us. But what their marketing department has determined is that new students don't want to see this shit. And so they're skipping it on the tour. The administration wonders why the enrollment rate is dropping, but they have not even attempted to communicate with the students. Had they done so, they would understand how the crippling prices of dining services, good to see very, very high quality education here. A very, very, very smart. Make sure to enroll in Evergreen State College, such as the greenery and POD market have endowed students with unpayable debt. It's not the $7,000 a year or $25,000 a year tuition. It is the price of their tacos. They would hear of how the prices at the bookstore are gouging students with their meager funds and parking services ticket us for parking illegally, presumably. How the police spy on us and persecute us. The evergreen community is being robbed by their alliance of police, the prison industrial complex, referring to Aramark, which is a company that makes napkins and food services, I believe, government bureaucrats, token progressives, so you're not progressive enough, and pandering market propagandists. The foundation of the school, let's go to the next page. <laughs> Uh, okay, probably just spying us. The Evergreen community is being robbed of alliance, blah, 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 blah. Oh, the foundation of this school were built on the corpses of the forest for which this school is named and theft of the land and culture from the Squealti tribe, Indian tribe, I assume, island people, for those who rightfully own this land. And the latest assault now focuses on the community that students and staffs have built. Ultimately, the Evergreen administration is to blame for causing these issues. They have bought regulation, police, food insecurity into us. Well, by the way, okay, I went to college for six years, an undergrad degree and a master's degree. You know how many meals I ate at the school? Probably two, maybe three, because I, like 99% of everyone I knew, would buy our own food and eat at home because it was way cheaper. And most of the kids that I saw eating in the school had meal plans, 
where they're, it was built into their tuition or their parents are paying for it. They have a little credit card they could swipe and eat their meals. Again, you have choices. You can go to Walmart and buy affordable food, or you can eat on campus and eat what's convenient. Life is about choices. Of course, I don't know if they'll learn this in their education at Evergreen State College, but there I just gave it to you for free. Rack has been complicit in the takeover while it searches the rooms like Gestapo looking for bags of grass, an excuse to levy additional debt over our already enormous living expenses. Now, this is a state college, by the way. I went to my state college for the first two years because that is what was smart financially. And guess what? I lived at home for free. Okay, not everyone can do that, sure. But you can live at home. That's the point of state college. It's supposed to be convenient to your students. You can have a couple of roommates if you have to live on your own, right? Again, not the fault of the college. This is a call to refuse the greenery or greenery and its world and to force the administration to answer for its utter disregard for the best interests of the evergreen community. So it's not all the insanity that happened uh, on campus last year. It's not that people don't want to pay between seven and $25,000 to go to college at a school that hates white people openly. Oh yeah, the assault on this school will only end when the students and faculty say no to the administration, scrawl on the walls, take the forest, shout in the square, put up posters, and let the administration know that we will not give up without a fight. We want our burritos to be $1.99. How do you even type all this up? You're in college. You're in college and you type all this up. You think that is why your school is suffering? Let me tell you what, if you, there are certain things called fixed costs, fixed expenses, right? This means that no matter what, depending, regardless of how many students enroll, there are fees like property taxes, like salaries that they cannot lay off because of student unions, uh, certain infrastructural expenses. And when attendance drops by 20 or as much as 30%, somebody has to pay for that. Regardless of whether or not you're full to the brim or at this low, new low, new low level, uh, those costs don't go away. Somebody has to pay for it. So undoubtedly, yeah, your burritos are a little bit more expensive. Your textbooks are probably a little more expensive. But good thing, you have freedom to choose a different school to go to. You are not a prisoner. Find a different school like so many others have done. This is a great sign that people are waking up. And these decisions of campuses to lean on social justice have consequences.